Idris Elba goes, people want to be in his orbit. That charisma comes through on screen, too, as drug kingpin on the wire. You make sure you buy something that you wouldn't otherwise. Nelson Mandela. As Mandela guilty, guilty, in The Long Walk to Freedom. It is not I, but the government that should plead guilty. As an obsessive, edgy detective on the crime series, Luther. You did it because you needed to do it. And it's that compulsion that makes you weak. Hollywood bigwigs have taken notice. His name was part of that Sony email leak. When producers associated with the Bond series kicked off a storm of speculation that Idris should be the next Bond. But then British 007 author Anthony Horowitz told a newspaper Elba is too street for the role, causing an uproar on social media and an apology from Horowitz, who admitted street was a poor choice of word and that he was mortified. While the Bond saga lingers, Elba keeps taking on powerful new roles. What are you doing here? His latest film, Beasts of No Nation, sees him try to humanize a brutal warlord of child soldiers. I saved your life. I saved your life. Go. I sat down with Idris Elba in Toronto. It was lovely to meet you. Nice to meet you, Wendy. Yeah, I'm really thrilled. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so this role, pretty different than Nelson Mandela. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm side of the spectrum. How do you, what's more interesting? What's more important, playing a hero or a thug? You know, Nelson Mandela is such a, you know, sort of almost, almost godlike character. So playing him was like, where do, we, where do you go from here? <laughs> Who else can you play that's like him? Not very many people. Did you ever meet Nelson Mandela? No, I didn't. But I'm close to his family, and Winnie was, she took me in. She sees me and she says, My husband. And she kisses me on the lips. Oh, dear. Every time. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> but um, on the other end of the spectrum, this is an important character to play because um, the story is important. You know, the perspective of this little boy and what he goes through as a child soldier, and my, and my role as his commandant, you know, how that plays a part and how. People like me played a massive part in in wars like that. Then it is important to sort of get that across. All of you that have never been listened to before and have seen your family killed, eh? you now have something that stands for you. You now have something that stands for you. Pretty gut wrenching, and it makes me think now of this whole refugee crisis happening, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we're paying more attention now to what's happening in the civil war in no, Syria. Yeah. Do we pay enough attention to what's happening to similar situations in Africa? I mean, is that part of what? No, I, I mean, there's I, there's absolutely not enough attention played. But I mean, how do you expect uh, you know everybody to sort of be able to pay attention to every single crisis? And and it's through the the sort of storytelling and films and documentaries and news reports where people can get to back and sit back and have a, a look at someone else's life. Um, so we all could do a lot more, couldn't we? I mean, you know, understanding other, other people's plights. So in this case, this film, I think is very timely. And as you said, you know, there's a massive amount of, you know, displaced children and, you know, just children going through a lot, period. Young people going through a lot of turmoil and this this film focuses on you know a set of a group of young people but it's definitely an important film and if it highlights if it makes people stop and go wow let me check this out a little bit more you know I think that's a good thing because you know your uncle and me we, we think you got a snitch up in the shop what someone who tips off the stick up crew and you got to be on that right you played a drug kingpin in The Wire uh, in Baltimore, and now, of course, there's all of this Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. uh, people are paying attention to so many of the issues that were brought up in that series. It was such a great series. Mm -hmm. um, when you heard about Freddie Gray, mm -hmm. uh, the, the young black man who died in mysterious circumstances mm -hmm. in police custody, did you, what did you, what did you think? I know it was a TV role, but you spent a lot of time in. I mean, yeah, Baltimore remains close to me, and although I don't get to go back there very, very much, but um, I think you nailed it. You know, there was, The Wire was obviously you know, fictional, but it definitely sort of, you know, forecasted some issues that, you know, cities like Baltimore are gonna have and have had. And, um, you know, it certainly reflected, you know, obviously because of, you know, it was tragic what happened to uh, Freddie, but it, it certainly 
feels like, you know, again, art, you know, not, I mean, life imitating art a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Because, um, you know, we see that sort of image over and over again. We've seen it in films, and now we're seeing it in real life in a, a mass scale. So are you, I read that you, in your early years, you left the UK uh, for New York because there wasn't enough sort of diversity roles. Are, are things changing? Are you, like the, the roles that you've chosen, um, I don't mean to keep harping on race, but some of the biggest roles that you've played could only have been played by, by a, a black man. And is, is that a choice to talk about those stories or is that sort of the only choices offered? Like is somewhere? I, I think, actually I disagree. I think, you know, the characters that I've managed to play have complex complexities, human complexities, not necessarily black. So if Stringer Bell was a white guy and wanted to be a drug dealer and wanted to be a, become a building, that storyline probably wouldn't have been that much different. Nelson Mandela, of course, that's a, you know, a leader, but again, a leader that has massive amounts of complexity. Of course, racism played or race played a big part in that role. Um, Luther is a character that I love and you know Luther is a torn damaged detective my point being that you know I, I find it um, refreshing personally that my career has been able to step away from stereotypes a little bit of course I'm a black man and I play black characters but my the, that's not necessarily the experience you get from the character that he's black or not so I do have to ask you about James Bond you do I do okay so would you so Daniel Craig, someday, they all step down someday, would, would you like that role? It's a great role, I mean, you know, people have asked me that all the time and I've, I've said, yeah, you know, playing James Bond, who would not want to play that? Um, it's a great role. So there's lots of chatter that you're one of the favorites. Are you like in negotiation right now that you'd not like to tell all. us about? <laughs> not at all. It is the wildest rumor in the world. It's a good one though. Yeah, well, it's I, more I, than I, a rumor. It was Sony executives talking about you. They kind of apparently, but you know, here's the thing. I, 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 you know, I'm complimented by it um, because it's a great character. It's a legacy of a character, but I, I, it's not mine. You know, there, there are lots of really good actors that are probably well more suited for the role. More suited, as mm. in the author saying that your street. No comment. Really? Yeah. That must have been disappointing, though. A little tiresome. If I'm honest, you know, I'm I'm like on a 19-hour day. I hear that. I mean, I'm not. It doesn't change my life. I mean, it caused an absolute storm. I think among young people, they were they were horrified that that, that I think things really are changing. The idea that you wouldn't be classy enough. It was just like ridiculous. The truth of it is, the young younger people certainly hearing this. What does the word street mean? What what does he mean by that? Um, it's a stereotype, so on and so forth. And of course, it's going to be shocking. But like I said, you know, I mean. And from my perspective, um, you, know, you know, everyone has a nose and everyone has an opinion. So what are you going to do? Is it bad to be street? I have no clue. <laughs> are you street? <laughs> I'm definitely from the street. Idris, it's been lovely to meet you. you Thank too. you so much. Thanks so much. Cheers, guys.